Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, hello there. This is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. And today we have an update on the emergency communications trailer installing some additional items into our floor to ceiling rack. Uh, and uh, specifically, we're going to really focus on the rig runner that you see here for DC power distribution and the antenna selectors that you see right above it. Uh, and so that's what we're going to focus on today, plus running some AC power from shore-based power over to the other side of the trailer. So we have shore power coming in on the uh, starboard side, but we need uh, shore power on the port side of the trailer. Here's the rig runner from West Mountain Radio. I got a chance to drop by their booth at Hamcation earlier this year and was really impressed with some of the products that they had. Uh, these types of distribution panels you can make for sure. In fact, AC4DM's made hundreds of these. Uh, but what I like about this one as well, not only is how professional it looks, but it can monitor the power coming in. Here we're fabricating a panel. Uh, so that we can attach the rig runner uh, to this particular panel which has already got holes that will fit the rack that we're using. I believe it's a 19 inch rack. Uh, K-O-4-E-O-L and AC-4DM are drilling some of the holes. Here we are actually uh, placing the rig runner on the panel getting an idea of where we want to place it. We wanted to leave some room over to the right for a potential meter uh, to add to this, which may come a little bit later, but here we're just basically eyeballing placement, marking those holes, and then we'll attach the rig runner to the panel, which we're doing here. You'll notice the two screws on the left-hand side here, which is actually looking at it from the top side, but uh, in any event, uh, getting this rig runner mounted to this particular panel and then ultimately mounting this into the rack and then attaching DC power that we have in the rack or being provided within the rack. Here's our rack install. It's looking sharp, isn't it? And uh, you can see that we're just finishing the installation of the panel. Now, we don't have power connected. One of the uh, ports on this rig runner is for DC in, and then it'll supply power to the other 12 ports. So, and they're each fused for different amperages, uh, depending on what it is you're trying to run. So for instance, on the far right, we have this little amp meter, excuse me, voltage meter uh, plugged in just to monitor the power coming in. Now, the rig runner does have the lights on the right hand side for power coming in over voltage and under voltage. So it will monitor the voltage with the LEDs, but here we actually can see the voltage uh, nice and easily. The other part of this uh, phase of rack installation was installing some antenna selectors. We wanted to install a couple and AC4DM usually has some new old stock around the shop that we can use for these kinds of projects. So here we have a two position with a, a ground in the middle. And what's great about this one, this is an Alpha Delta, as is this four position switch. Alpha Delta makes some of the best four position or multi position switches out there. And we have the arc plug in the middle. So when you're in that ground position, uh, or it doesn't matter if you're in the ground position, but the arc plug is there in case you have a strike, a lightning strike, and you have uh, a some type of heavy duty uh, voltage and or current coming in, you want to protect your gear. Those arc plugs can be replaced. In fact, you, if you're going to buy these, you need to make sure you have a little hand, uh, a few of these on hand just in case your uh, uh, antenna selector gets uh, struck. So here we're laying them out on the panel that we're going to use. Now, this is uh, aluminum stock that AC4DM had in the shop, so we'll need to clean that up a little bit, sand it off. And in addition, since it wasn't an actual panel mount already, we needed to go ahead and fabricate and create some of the holes on the sides to mount it to the rack itself. So here we're using a drill press, KO4EOL is manning the press here. We had those uh, uh, positions marked. And now that we have the holes drilled on the left and on the right, we gave it a nice blue coat of paint. You'll also notice the four holes there in the middle for the antenna selectors and mounting those. Uh, first coat of blue paint, put it out in the sun to let it dry, and then a second coat of blue paint 
was all it needed. Man, it turned out really good. Here we're actually drilling those four holes for the antenna selectors, or the two holes each, I think it was actually. Uh, AC4DM also had screws and uh, nuts ready to go in a little kit that he had for these kinds of various projects. So we're just drilling those holes for each of the antenna selectors. And in addition to that, we wanted to put some black caps on the top just to protect the connectors themselves from rain, uh, moisture, dust, that sort of thing. Boy, does that look sharp. So now we've got our two antenna selectors. We've got the caps on the top. It's painted blue. Looks wonderful. All we have to do now is install this into the rack. So there we have it. We've got our rig runner there. We've got our antenna selectors installed. Everything's really coming together. Uh, and AC4DM had also installed some shelves and so forth for uh, radios, which we'll show in a later picture here in just a few moments. But we're not done. We've got DC power now from a battery installed in the rack. But what about AC power? How do we charge the battery in the rack? So we need to run some AC power from the port side of the trailer to the starboard side of the trailer. And so we're drilling a hole in the floor, cutting some L brackets and fitting those on the bottom side of the trailer with a PVC conduit to run AC power from one side of the trailer to the other so that it's not actually inside the trailer acting as a trip hazard. So we installed the L brackets, the conduit, and ran an extension cord underneath the floor. Here, AC4DM is stripping the three wires, your uh, hot, ground, and neutral wires uh, of this extension cord. He just clipped one end so that we could run it underneath the trailer and up through the smaller hole, but now we need to put a plug back on this particular extension uh, cable or extension um, cord. And here he's actually making adjustments to the plug. Now you can buy these plugs at pretty much any hardware store that's out there. We have a couple of electrical supply places in town, plus your big box stores, you can get these. And then you just insert your wires uh, in the correctly color-coded uh, uh, slots in the plug itself. And then we're gonna plug this in. So you'll notice uh, this is on the uh, uh, port side of the trailer where we actually can plug into shore power. You can see the knot there to keep it from going down through the hole uh, as we run it to the other side. And we also have shore power, the yellow cable there, ready to go for the port side. But on the starboard side, we didn't have any AC power. So what we did is now we can plug that in on the starboard side of the trailer uh, where the rack is. We're going to plug this into an AC power distribution panel, which is on the back side of the rack. This provides us with AC power so that we can recharge the battery that you can see there at the very bottom of the rack. As we use power from that battery when we're out in the field, when we bring it back to the shop, we'll recharge it. So everything's plugged in now. Really nice. So now we've got power. Uh, AC power on both sides of the trailer, DC power on both sides of the trailer. I just don't know how much better this can get. But we do need to uh, consider that battery down at the bottom. Now this is a marine deep cycle battery. It's in its nice little case there. And it's what's providing power to the rig runner. Here's our AC power distribution uh, um, panel, if you will, installed on the back side of the rack. And you can see uh, we've got a couple of things already plugged into it. The cable on the left is what's plugged into shore power. The two cables on the right are for devices, specifically an iota battery charger or battery minder. So you can see the battery in the box. You can also see the iota just a little bit in the distance there. And you can also see that this particular iota utilizes a, a charging module to monitor the battery for charging, but also for certain batteries to desulfate the battery itself so that it doesn't uh, uh, degrade over time. With one of these iotas connected, charging the battery and desulfating where needed, uh, your batteries can last for years. It's amazing how long. In fact, we've got some batteries in our sh uh, repeater shack that have been in there for uh, for many, many years. Never have been replaced because they're maintained properly. You can get those modules for different kinds of batteries for the IOTA as well. So here's the overall uh, racked as it looks today. We've got our aluminum panel down at the bottom just to um, uh, protect the battery or to um, uh, basically just to, uh, uh, to cover the battery. Then we have the energy, the rig runner, the antenna selectors, shelves for different radios that will be coming out of our go boxes when we go out into the field. So we have an empty shelf, an FTM 400 with power supply, a packet radio, but we could put any kind of radios in here that we would like, depending on what the exercise might require. A shelf maybe for some cables, that particular cables for our solar panels, and then a rack at the top where we're gonna probably put a display for some security cameras. 
Folks, these kinds of projects are a heck of a lot of fun. If you've got Elmers in your club that can help you with these kinds of projects, get involved. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association 73s.